Hi everybody, Robert back here again. I want to just do a part two to this, show you some more features. But here, I don't like this here. You should have named these earlier. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this this one, this family, this unistrut, this piece of unistrut we placed in here as a beam. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to edit this family. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to hit fine and I'm going to hit shaded view so we can see what's happening here. So for this guy right here, what I want to do, I'm going to do a file, say that family, and I'm going to rename this what it's supposed to be. So it's a P2000T, not BWG, but it's just a P. Let me just delete that. P2000T, and I'm going to hit options here. We can say one or two, so I'll just say one. That's just normal. Okay. And I'll save it. Now, once I've got it saved here, I'll go back into my plan view drawing here. Let's see. Here we go. Um, oh, sorry, this one. The second floor? Nope. We the first floor. Keep getting these mixed up. Okay, so now here we've got these. So what I want to do here, I want to just select this guy here. In fact, I want to select all of them. Select all instances. An entire project. We got them all. And what I want to do is I want to go into my properties. They want to change these to P2000. Uh oh. I don't want the DWG there. Oh, geez. So let's cancel that out. Let's go back here and fix this once again. Sorry, folks. I want to redo this video. I want to edit family here. And I want to do file, save as, family. And I'll just go right here and I'll say P2000T. And I'll save it. Really? Hmm. I'll just say yes for now. I don't know why he's saying that. Okay, so now here, we want to load this back into our project. Now here, I want to select this, and I want to select all instances in the entire project, and then I want to change this to our P2000T, and there we have it. So that's what I wanted to do. So those are all our P2000Ts. So now let's go grab our column, uh, edit type, edit family. And we will go here. We will just call this guy uh, Save As. Shouldn't have to do this. We should have did this before. Uh, P, uh, what is this one? This one is the 5501T. P, I don't want to do that. Yes, there we go. P, 50. 5501T. And then I'll save it. And now I'll load him back into our project. This will be that one. So now we don't have this tag, so like we have all these others. So let's go into our, we did this exercise before. Uh, I just did a exercise on tag. So we go annotate and we'll go tag by category. Oh, okay, stay of same family too. So what we'll do here is select these guys. Right click, select all instances in entire project. Uh oh, nope, I don't want the beans, I want the column. So there we go, right click, select all instances in the entire project. 
And then here, we'll go and place that with our 5501T. 5500T. So there we go. So now let's go into our tags. Because we don't have tags for the columns. We have them for the beam. These are beam tags. So for the column, we'll just go here. We'll go um, annotate. Tag by category. And now I don't want that leader. So I'll just go here. There's my 5501T. So we just get them all in there. Those are our columns. Now, damn. As you can see now, this thing is a generic model. We can load one in, but I'm going to show you some things that that can't do because it's just generic. Uh, we can change it to uh, structural framing if we want, but for this exercise, I want to show you a few things. So now there's our model. So now what I want to do now is uh, let me just shut that down for now. So there's all of our unit strut. Um, this one there. I should have just did this. Yep. Should have just did tag all, but that's okay. Now, so there's our model with tags, and there's all of our beams and our P2000Ts and our 5501Ts. So now what we can also do here, since we have uh, structural framing, let's do a beam system here. We can do a beam system also. So we go structural beam system. Uh, that's six feet. That's kind of wide. So let's drop that down to for Unistrut, maybe two feet here. And justification will be center. So we just go drop it in here and bam. There's all our Unistrut beam systems right there. And then we can go put another one here. Or we can sketch one out. Say we can go down here. We can do a sketch. Say we only have here. We'll go finish. And there's our beam system there. I don't know why they didn't tag over here for some reason. Now, what happens here? Now, if I go back to my 3D view, as you can see, these are our Unistrut P2000s. And there's our Unistrut P3000 once again. So we can do the whole frame. We can frame this whole thing using our beam system. So we, let's go ahead and do this. So let's go um, back into that plan, that floor plan view. And just go beam system here. Let's cancel that for the moment. So we'll go beam system. I like the automatic, but I'm going to just drop that here. Can't cancel it. I'm going to just cancel out of this for now. That's basically all I want to show you. I don't want to drag this video up too long because I know people do not like long videos. At least I don't. Automatic. And here. And then we can go and do our... This is okay, I guess. So we frame this whole thing with Unistrut. And then they can put whatever type of flooring on here they want or whatever. So, so there's our whole Unistrut framing. And now what we can do next is uh, we can go up to another level. So that's just simply selecting this system. And I want to go um, copy on the place to line selected levels. And I'll just go up to roof and there you go 
And the, the thing about it is, you know, I'm sure everybody knows about BAME systems. You want to keep them as a BAME system. That way you can uh, manipulate it and modify them. So we can go with this one again. Actually, I want to just undo this here. I want to tab. I'm going to right click. I want to select all instances. And then I want to go paste. And we'll go to align selected levels and we'll go up to the uh let's see what level are we on now? We'll go up to the roof. We'll go okay. This rip is stinking. So there you go. So that's how that will work. So we've got all Unistrut here. And then now what I want to show you now is how to make this or this becomes an analytical model. So what happens here, we'll go into our uh, analyze here. And then these are your load conditions here for load. OK, we can't do that. So we can do load cases. OK, these are wind loads and certain load types. And then we can do our loads. Now, what I want to show you here is we need to make this model analytical. So what we do for that, we basically go into our 3D view, which we are in, and go to VV and select analytical model categories. And so nothing's on here. All this stuff that says analytical, we want to turn it on for bracing. Uh, so let's just turn them all left. Well, let's turn them all on for now. And then supply, OK. And there we have an analytical model now. And these uh, are point loads. And these can be analyzed in structural programs like MicroStrand, um, whatever. I don't have those on me here. But these are, this is what you call an analytical model. Now, as you can see, this guy, our generic guy, can't do that. He's stupid. He can't do anything. All he can give us is holes. And he can be manipulated. But to get a structural analytical model, you need to use the elements that I use. See, there's uh, the framing. The dot is the point loads. And what they do, how they calculate them is they go and analyze here. And then load combinations. Wait a second here. Do this here. Actually, maybe I'll do a part three to this. These are the point loads. They will go in here at each point, and then the engineer will do stresses. I'll tell you what, I'm going to do another video of this, and I'm going to show you how to do an analyzer model for loads, cases, and things like that. So, hey guys, thanks for watching my video, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, and everybody, please be safe.